So my goal today is to share with you how I believe the diaspora can be involved in development here in Ghana. Why are most of us here? Like most of you here, I'm here to be enlightened, to be inspired, to be entertained. Some people came to meet friends. And some people heard that the National Theater is the only place that doesn't have Domso, so we showed up. According to the World Bank, $147 million made its way into Ghana in 2014 in terms of remittances. And remittances means when you flash someone or you get a flash and you send money back home. That sounds like a lot of money, but if you look back to 2010, the number was $152 million. 2010 was an interesting year for Africa in general. It was the first year that the World Cup was in Africa, in South Africa. And that was also the year that Ghana made it as far as we've ever made it in the World Cup. I remember cheering for Ghana, sitting in New York City, and the booze from, you know, our American compatriots, myself being a Ghanaian American, outweighed the cheers for Ghana. Needless to say, I'm also sure the following year, the decline in investments to Ghana was a result of Baby Jet and his missing of the infamous penalty shot. So I want to put these numbers in perspective for you. 147 million, what does that mean? Early this afternoon, this morning rather, Mami Abwafa spoke about Dr. Bwach AJ, who opened Focus Hospital here in Accra in 2012. Now Dr. AJ was just featured on CNN as an African hero. And what he does with the Focus Hospital is he brings in people from all around the world to perform some of the world's most critical surgeries here in Ghana. Before him, the country had 20 orthopedic surgeons for 26 million people. Now, if you divide 147 by 10 million, which was the cost of the hospital, you know, simple math would tell you you can use the money from last year to build a hospital in every single region here in Ghana. If we look at education, Patrick Aoua, who I met in New York City at a fundraising event, and I met here in passing to verify my numbers, has been able to do amazing things with the Shesse University. The cost of the university to date is 15 million. If we take the 147 from last year alone and divide that by 15, math would tell you that he can build an Ashesi in each of Ghana's 10 regions. If we look at national infrastructure, specifically the Accra Tema Motorway, we see that in 2002, a project to put street lights on the Accra Motorway didn't happen because of theft, but also a lack of money. That project was going to cost 500,000 Ghana cities. 2009, a report showed that they were going to have a project to rehab the roadway, which would have cost 131 Ghana cities. And then in 2015, they're looking to expand it, and that's going to cost 4.5 million. If you add all that up, you see that there's more than enough money to do the renovations 28 times over. Now, we've watched videos before, and we saw how in 2007, Professor Ayite challenged the Cheetah generation to pretty much push and develop and invest in Africa's infrastructure, specifically agriculture and traditional medicine, which is experiencing a boost in tourism, according to most of the travel magazines we read today. He also challenged them to come back home and help with nation building. And Fred Swanica, as we watched in the video, shared the same sentiments. But how is this possible? Well, if we look at Israel, a nation that has been able to leverage its diaspora since 1951, what they were able to do is create a program that allowed Israel to pretty much free itself from food rationing and scarcity. In 2013, they were able to raise $1.2 billion, which is about the same amount of money that Ghana went to ask for from the IMF, from their diaspora alone, and other institutions as well. What does this all mean? Michael Morand earlier said something very powerful about the power of networks. He said that this generation is uniquely positioned to really leverage the networks that we create. Therefore, my challenge to you all is to continue to build these networks. I met Michael in New York City, and we met again in Accra. On the plane that was delayed, there was a gentleman, Eric, who was stopped at the airport as I was stopped as well. We made eye contact, and he looked familiar. Funny enough, I met him here today. I met people today that I've been friends with on social media for years, but we've never met in person. 
and we've already started discussing projects and ways to leverage the diaspora. So my challenge to you all today is to really continue to build networks, and let's continue to build these infrastructure systems that would allow us to really create Pan-African titans, similar to what Sangu Dele said in his talk last October at TED Global. And if all else fails, we'll still have pa 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 because it's a movement. Thank you.